That's gonna be his new nickname. Jake, I got your hat, Paul. It seems to have gotten a, a Showtime contract. You have one of history's best ever boxes. Yeah. Almost chasing a fight with a YouTuber. One of these days, because now enough of them are starting to fight, that one of these days, one of them is going to get themselves hurt badly. Because you don't play boxing. Yes, people. I am Savage Dan. I'm Paulie Malinaji. You are watching Mouthpiece, the official boxer podcast. Welcome back to Mouthpiece. I am Savage Dan. And I'm Paulie Malinaji. And today we are in a bit of a time loop because we are, co we are recording this episode ahead of time. We are somehow in the future. I've taken a break. It's the Champions League final. Chelsea are, are now the, the, the champions of Europe, hopefully, and, and uh, all the is stress. well in the world. The stress. <laughs> this, we've disrupted the space-time continuum. It's a reference from Back to the uh, Future. All right, let's look ahead to this weekend's fight. Um, one that is, is a crazy one. Should it even be happening? Floyd Mayweather against, Log uh, against Logan Paul. I'm not even sure how I feel about it. Of course, I'm going to watch it. And there's rumours that Showtime are, are, are throwing around contract talks and, and stuff like that, Paulie. Yeah, yeah, that was, uh, you know, the Mayweather-Logan Paul fight is happening, right? And uh, and I've, and, and everybody's right, waiting and ready for that. And it'll probably get tons of views because Mayweather is a, a phenomenon, a, a ratings phenomenon, and so are the Paul brothers. Okay, but now I'm hearing, and I'm sure you've heard too, that Jake Paul is getting a Showtime contract. So, first of all, I don't know how Logan Paul should feel about this. Because Logan Paul is kind of being brought in here as just the, 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 the guy who's going to get tossed around and then uh, and thrown out. You know, but and, and honestly, he's lost already to KS, uh, what is it, KSI, uh, the guy KSI. from England. And so, yeah. and he's not going to beat Mayweather. So, as an 0-2 record, Showtime wants nothing to do with the guy, even though he probably still sells a ton. But, but Jake Paul, on the other hand, was Jake took your Jake got your hat, Paul. That's gonna be his new nickname. Jake, I got your hat, Paul. It seems to have gotten a, a Showtime contract. Now I'm not there. Those these are my old uh, my old uh, employees, uh, employers. But I don't know if I, how I would feel about this. If I, you know, I used to always make myself heard in those in those production meetings, and I think I'd I'd probably give in my two cents. I get the whole ratings thing, but. Here's the problem. You're kind of going more and more in the direction of making the face of boxing a YouTuber or an Instagrammer or whatever mm -hmm. they call it er these days. You know, uh, I always prefer boxing to be, you know, on a certain pedestal. You know, it's, it's a, the gentleman's combat sport. It's, it's the oldest. Yeah. And I prefer the face of boxing to be an AJ or a Canelo or, or an Errol Spencer Crawford. You know, uh, guys who have put in the work and have the foundation and the substance, the substance yeah. to really be the face of the sport. You know, uh, even Tyson Fury. But the thing is, the thing is, you're getting more and more casuals being brought into the sport. And yes, that's good. I've always defended the Paul brothers and saying, you know what, if they generate the ratings and they deserve the money. But the problem you're getting is now you're getting a lot of copycat guys. You're getting a lot of copycat guys. And now every TikTok, what is it, TikToker, YouTuber, Instagrammer, uh, whatever, uh, whatever er there is now, if he's got enough following, they, they start boxing. And I relate this, and I've said this before, I relate this to the most popular guys in the school when they get into a fight with each other. And the whole school wants to watch it. And it doesn't matter if they know how to fight. The nerd down the hallway might be a black belt in jiu-jitsu, but nobody cares if he's fighting somebody because yeah. he's not that popular. But the two most popular guys, they start fighting, everybody wants to watch it. It's re regard So it's a high school mentality, regardless of the talent or the skill set involved here. So... It's turning the faces of the sport. Somebody like you go to, to a random person and ask them what boxer do they know. You know, boxing is a niche sport, at least in this in this country, in the United States. And maybe in England it's a bit more popular. But mm -hmm. in the United States, you ask somebody to name a, a boxer, a random person, you're more apt to get the names maybe Floyd Mayweather or a, a YouTuber then you are to yeah. get the name like Spence, or Errol Spence, uh, Terrence Crawford, uh, uh, even a Canelo. You know what I'm saying? Uh, or a Deontay Wilder. You won't get that. You know, like I feel like that's a shame. I and again, I will defend the position that these guys deserve the money they're generating because they're generating the ratings. But if you don't put a stop to this, it's like when the little leak is coming and coming and coming, and then it, then it breaks right through. Now you got a whole flood. But you can you even put a stop to this? Because you gotta this is, speak this is, up. It's been guys, creeping I'm, into the sport, I'm, Paulie, for years. It's, yes. It is. We even I, get this amongst championship you know fighters what? in the sense of you haven't got enough Instagram followers, you haven't got enough of a profile, you're not a big enough name 
to be yeah. able to fight me. It almost is that yeah. already, it, and yes, now it's it just are, becoming yes, it started. Canelo worse. actually is a little bit to blame in that regard. He doesn't want to fight yeah. Booboo because, oh, who are you? What are you doing? Mm-hmm. It, now you're, as Mike Tyson once said, I was a fighter. I was a killer. Now these guys are businessmen. You always want to be a businessman, but you, are you a fighter? Are you a thoroughbred in that way? You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? You're, are you are you built that way mentally and physically? You know, I don't think a lot of these generation are, and they started this. You know, honestly, the guy who started this whole charade is, is Conor McGregor when he fought Mayweather. He, the non-boxer coming in. I don't care that he had MMA experience. The guy couldn't box his way out of a, of, out of a wet paper bag, and yet... You know, it generated all the ratings, but it gave the ideas that, you know what? It's not about the talent. It's about the following and the followers. And suddenly, it spawned this whole movement after that, and you've seen it g- getting out of control now. Again, the Paul brothers, I can I can vibe with that. They were one of the first ones to do it. But now, everybody with a following wants to do this. And it's getting to the point where you're going to kind of mask up, you know, you're going to mix up the perception of the sport. There is a an elite mm-hmm. level to this sport that people aren't even following anymore, you know? It's like, for example, we were complaining about the European Super League. It's like, if as if they created the Super League, but everybody wanted to watch the league championship and, and Serie B instead. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Or, or You know, it's like, you, you, it, it boggles your mind, right? But this is what's happening. This is what's happening it somehow. Is. And, and so I, I feel like, it's got to be put an end to somewhere. So it's a little bit disappointing um, that, you know, Jay got the contract so quickly. I get the ratings matter, but this is only going to embolden the guys behind Jake that are doing this like Jake. And not everybody's going to be able to do this like Jake, because I I know Jake has been putting in the hard work. He's BJ Flores' his trainer. I, I came up with BJ mm-hmm. Flores. I know they're putting in work, because BJ's a, a no BS kind of guy. And he's been doing this for a couple of years, but now you've got guys. I mean, you've got guys that started boxing last week. They're already looking for fight contracts. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. You you don't even know how to yeah, shadow box yet, and you're already getting a fight contract. And, 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 and then when you get that fight contract, more people will tune in then when a legitimate world champion comes in and fights, who's put in the time and is actually a marvel to watch because he's so skilled, but ignorance cannot appreciate the skill. Somebody once told yeah, me ignorance... The, the problem is poorly as well. It's integrity. You, we want to keep the integrity of the sport and everyone and everything has integrity until there's just so much money being they, thrown at you. And then and all of a the sudden... Thing. Money makes the world go round, but then call it a different sport. Don't associate it with yeah. boxing. We need to call it something else. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Because if you call it boxing, it, 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 you, it's, you're going to jumble up all the names together, and now all of a sudden they're in the same conversation with these legitimate ex, uh, elite fighters. You know, and, and it's not the same sport. It's really not. If you watch one it's of these not. guys fight and you watch an elite level fight at the same time, it's not even – it's like you're watching two different sports, really. You know? So yeah. so it's, uh, it's a bit frustrating, and like I said, it, it – I guess mankind in general just overdoes it every time. You know what I mean? This was okay at first. It was a phenomenon that the Paul brothers were doing this. It was even cool to me. at that. But now, because the greed comes in, and I get it, that Showtime wants to make the money and get the ratings. Because the greed comes in now, now you've given a contract to a guy, and because of it, you now have created this whole push behind him of guys who just have the followers and really haven't put in the work that even he's put in, you know? And now all of a sudden it's spilling. We had, that was yeah. the original league and now it's just spilled all over the place. Yeah, and now it's you have everywhere. a mess. And, and now it's, and now you have, you, you have one of history's best ever boxes yeah. almost chasing a fight with a YouTuber because yeah, he knows. Yeah. Of course. It's, 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 as, it's, as, it's, as a it's retired, money. as a retired fighter, you can always take on these YouTubers and beat them all right. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, Mayweather did it to McGregor, who is the, the equivalent of a YouTuber coming to boxing in terms of that. He had a, just yeah. a big following, but had no clue how to box. And so it's the same thing here. You're, you're now getting the same thing. Dan, it's up to guys like us to put an end to this, bro. We've, we've got some boots and how boxing. Do we, how, how do we, we end gotta it? gotta take we... these. That's it. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. I've already expressed it that I'm tired of it. How? I, how? 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 Anybody, what are we doing? Somebody's got... You, they're feeling froggy. They leave. I look, look at this. Look at this. Okay. I heard a guy feeling froggy, a TikToker feeling froggy. Corey B from uh, from uh, the 92.3 radio show in, in New York and 104.3 radio show in, in Miami. I put him in his yeah. place. I had to put him on blast, right? Dan, you got to start putting these guys on blast. Doesn't matter. Uh, what I've been, saying, I've been saying it for the longest. 
I don't care if I fight these guys in the ring. I don't care if I fight these guys outside on the road right now. You're all you're getting knocked out. You fight me, you're getting knocked out. It's yeah, happening. Then, then we gotta do it in the ring, though. You know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, no, you but, gotta let, you then, gotta let the every world time we know, do it in the, the ring. The world, the world has to know that they don't belong here. So the way you do it, yeah. you let the whole world see. But do you know what's annoying, Paulie? I think the world already knows. It's just the world doesn't care. Yeah, but here's the thing. One of these days, because now enough of them are starting to fight, that one of these days, one of them is going to get themselves hurt badly because you don't play right. boxing. And it's going to yeah. take that. And then all of a sudden, this whole phenomenon is going to go, whoop, disappear. Just like that. Do you that. know what we should do? Like we that. should make it so that all of these YouTubers, their first fight has to be Canelo. <laughs> That's it. That's no. it. That's it. If you want, that's it. that's the gatekeeper now. And, and they and they Canelo have to sign a waiver. Money. We are not responsible if you wind up in any sort of that's physical it. harm. Uh, you know, you ever sign those contracts? I've had to sign these contracts when it, when it's part of a fight contract or, or one of these, uh, uh, even one of these shows where it's like all all the risk you're putting in, and at the end, even that's death, it. even de and yes. death is there that's too. It. And you death, have to sign it. You have. Yeah. Nobody's liable that's for it. your death. I'm and you're fighting. I, I can't wait. <laughs> and you're fighting at a catch weight. There's no way around it. Um, this fight, anyway, it, regardless of whether it should happen and whether we want it to happen, it's happening. Can we see anything other than a Mayweather win and dis no, demolition? No. Can we see? No, no. It, is it interesting at all? The fight I mean, itself? It, 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 it's interesting because it's Mayweather and Logan Paul, and they're both very popular. You know, it's interesting for that reason, but... The reality of it is, you know, there's no. I don't even think there's probably any betting lines, right? I mean, I, I would think anybody putting out a betting line will be an idiot. I mean, it's there's no shot, you know. So because Mayweather is not only the best uh, in his time, but even past his prime, he will still be. He always has the mentality to be defensively yeah. responsible. So he'll never get caught with a stupid shot just because against the Logan Paul anyway. He won't because it. it he's always. A defensively responsible guy first, and he lets that translate into his offense. You know, so he's never going mm -hmm. to become irresponsible defensively just to get you out of there because you know he's going to get you out of there anyway. He's always going to beat you anyway, yeah. so he can afford to be defensively responsible and just to, and just take you and break you apart or just take you right out, depending on what level you're at. And he's never going to give up that mentality. It's really the mentality of the fighter. You know, that people wonder yeah. why he didn't knock out McGregor. In a round or two, in a round or two. In reality, he didn't knock out McGregor in a round or two because he's again, he's always defensively responsible first, you know. So he's gonna yeah. take it, take his time, and then break the guy up. If it was a Golovkin or a Canelo who maybe are a little bit less defensively responsible, and their priority is to hurt you, um, okay, Mayweather's priority is to hurt you too. But of course, first and foremost, he's always a defensively responsible uh, fighter. So with that in mind. The Logan Paul fight, when people say, oh, it just takes one shot, he's bigger, you know, maybe he'll get lucky. No, he won't. He won't get lucky. He's not, because Mayweather's too defensively responsible. So he will not get yeah. lucky. It does it, it does take one shot that it's never going to land, even if they fall 100 rounds in a row. It's just not going to happen. Um, and that's 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 why you shouldn't have a line on the fight. Not financial advice, but financial advice. If you're betting, bet for a Mayweather win. Um, and buy Bitcoin. Uh, anyway, <laughs> buy the dip. <laughs> buy the dip. <laughs> if it's still dipping by the time we got the show on here, who knows? Yeah, it's probably gone by now. Uh, all right. Listen, we are halfway through the year, and we're gonna do something a little bit different, simply because uh, we can and we're allowed to. So we are gonna do a best of the best draft, bully. Um, so the way this is gonna work is we're gonna go through the weights. There are far more weights and weight divisions in boxing than there used to be and probably should be. But we are going to go through them and we're going to work out who is going to be a world champion at the end of the year. Um, so I'm going to let you go first. You pick a weight division, you pick a fighter, and I'm going to have to pick the other one or the other two or whatever it is who potentially right. could be a world let's champion go with, at the end let's of the go, year. I well. guess we're going to go with it. We're going to eliminate the easy ones first and then the ones that get tricky we'll put later. I'm going to go light heavyweight. Artur Berbiev will, be will still be a champion. And I think we'll be the top guy at 175 pounds at light heavyweight by end, at the end of this year. I am. I mean, there's no. I'm trying to think if there's a a curveball I could throw. Um, light heavyweight world champion. We know he's going to be better be of, but I'm looking at Badu Jack. Are we going to go with the regular title? Come on. Are we going to really uh, go with the regular title? 
It's I'm, on, it's I'm on, actually, we it's, could it's on, That's the only real fight on the Mayweather card, mind you, is Badu Jack and John yes. They had they had a barn burn in the first fight. That is so. Yeah. All right. You tell me the itself, rules, then, Paulie. Paulie. The, the fight itself. All their regular titles involved in this. You know what? That that fight itself is really a much better fight than the belt that's on the line for it. You know what I'm saying? That yeah. is a great fight because those two guys really gave a, a pure entertainment the first time they fought. So, um, yeah. I think, um, yeah, I, I don't I don't think the the, the regular title matters. I don't think the regular title matters. So you've got, yeah, I, I, I honestly don't see Bitter Beer fighting Joe Smith by the end of the year or uh, who's the other champion in the weight class? Is Joe Smith and uh, who's the other one? Because Bivol. Bitter Beer, Bivol. So I don't see Bivol or Joe Smith fighting Bitter Beer at the end of the year. So in reality, both of those guys could potentially still be champions. I'm going to have to go with Bivol then. I feel like no one's going to take his belt off him, certainly by December, certainly by the end of the year. I feel like... Uh, he will be uh, the other champion there. I, I'm trying to. I, I really want to be smart and and like throw a curveball out there and be like, actually, no, I think that this unknown fighter is going to come through the ranks and do it by December. But so what do you think? Not in that guy, division. What, I don't what, think. What, what's the British guy? The the, the 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 tall British guy who's actually looking better and better. Oh, the Richards. Who's, what's the yeah, fight? Craig Richards. You know what? It, it, Craig Richards has been named to fight Bivol. The curveball could be. He's a good fighter, but, but I'm not but sure I if he probably, gets another opportunity by yeah. December. I don't think he should either. I, I think his time will come if they take their if they take their time the right way. But if you want to throw a curveball, <laughs> yes, you're the one looking I for curveballs, then. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm looking for curveballs. I was in my head. I was thinking p- perhaps Buwatsi, if Buwatsi ends up fighting Bivol by the end of the year. I heard whispers, but no, we're gonna. I'll stick with Bivol. You know, you know, right, let me... r- they, you know, there's another rumor at that weight. There's also a, an all New York fight, uh, Danny Jacobs and Joe Smith at light heavyweight. Oh yeah, so yeah. Uh, another curveball could be that Danny Jacobs beats Joe Smith, and Dundee, Danny Jacobs is a, is a light heavyweight world champion by the end of the year, a legitimate light heavyweight champion with a major world title. I'll go with Bivol. You go with Bita Um And the rest are just wild cards. And the rest are wild cards. Uh, I may as well. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, actually. This is, this is an interesting one. Um, the heavyweight division. The heavyweight Four division major can get tricky. The heavyweight division so gets tricky this... because of all these fights falling exactly. out. Um, I'm going to assume that August 14th continues and actually happens at this moment in time and i'm gonna say that at the end of the year anthony joshua is the world champion anthony joshua is the world champion at the end of the year interesting because if august 14th happens technically the wbc title gets stripped from tyson fury so yeah. that way so deontay wilder would be fighting for the vacant title so i would guess i would have to give deontay wilder the pick if you pick um but if that, that's if he doesn't take step aside money. He doesn't take step aside money. But what what choices do I have? I only have Fury. You have Tyson Fury. You have Tyson well, Fury. You could just go. Yeah, but if the fight me. happens, sure. I, I think Fury beats AJ and Deontay. But it, it, it could be that. You know what? Yeah, you pick. If you picked AJ, I'm gonna go with Fury. I mean, what am I? What am I doing here? You know, I'm 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 I'm, I'm talking about po- the possible politics of everything. Uh, it's 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 yeah. If they, if the I happens. go Joshua. I, I, here's Joshua, a, here's the friend. risk of here's the risk of all this. The fight doesn't happen because of uh, because of um, of everything getting you know uh, undone, and then Fury mm-hmm. has to fight Wilder, and then you've still got two different world champions. I thought so. Technically, we could both be right because if Fury winds up fighting Wilder, exactly. Fury's gonna beat Wilder again. So and AJ will still be champion. So you know what? That's we what could both that, be right. That was my case. thinking. That was yeah. my thinking when I when I, I I'm assuming. You're a team. You're I'm, a team I'm player. I'm assuming this. This yeah. This could go yeah. anyway. Uh, give me another division. Okay, let's go with. Da, 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 da. Let's go with the middleweight. I'm gonna say Jamal Charlo. It's a good one. That's a. One six. I guess I, I I have no choice. I don't think at middleweight, other than to go Mungia. Mungia, Mungia yeah. with Golovkin and Andre there. You're gonna go with Mungia. I think I'm gonna go with Mungia. All right. Is Mungia. is Gol- is Golovkin gonna keep? Ca- He's at 168, no? No, I, I think Golovkin has a 160 pound title of the IBF. I think if I'm sure. Let me check. Has he got I it? I think I think he's the IBF. No, no. Oh, anyway, let's see. Let's see. It's crazy. We have to. We us. Yeah, he's the IBF champion. I think. 
uh, us that we, yeah, IB, Gennady Golovkin is the IBF champion. The fact that this shows that there's too much going on in boxing is too confusing because there's a lot. We're, like, we're, like there's a lot of fighters between we're experts weight at division. this, and we have to check who has the belts. All right. Uh, do you know what? I'm still going to stick. It's so is, hold on. Is Munguia not a world champion? He was at 154, but he's not a world champion at 160. Hmm. All right, then I'm going Golovkin. Golovkin. I have no choice. It looks like I've got no choice. I'm going Golovkin. Could go with um, Bubu because no, nobody's going to fight him and he's probably still going to be champion. Is it what, what belt has he got, though? WBO, I think. Let's see. You never know. Canelo might fight him. I mean, I'd, I'd by the end of the year, more. I'd love nothing more. But I, uh... I'm gonna go. I, I'm gonna stick with. I'm gonna stick with Golovkin actually. Okay. Um, all right. Welterweight. Errol Spence. Yeah, and I'm gonna go with Crawford. I mean, they're not gonna fight each other. They will both have championship yep. belts at the end of the year. And I don't think those belts are changing hands. Uh, Your pick. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, 130 pounds, super featherweight, and I'm going to give a wild card. I'm going to say Chris Colbert wins his first world championship uh, super by, the of, by the end of the year. Chris uh, Chris Colbert. So, you're, so you, you went straight for a wild card. I'm going to keep it. Um, no, I'm stay, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with Shakur Stevenson. Shakur Stevenson, okay. That makes okay. enough sense. All right. Cruiserweight. Yeah. I'm gonna go Lawrence Sokoli. I feel like uh, he's too awkward, too rangy. I'm not sure what his his fight schedule looks like, but I just can't see anybody fighting him and beating him in the next yeah, six nah. months. Yeah, Sokoli is a dangerous guy. You know, uh, he really, really impressed me when it, it was knockout win over Golovki. Um, at cruiserweight, you you got a Coley. I'm probably just gonna go with Maris Bredis, I guess, at this point. You know. Uh, yeah, I think Brett, yeah, you know. makes sense. So, okay, all right, let's uh, pick up featherweight. Featherweight. I'm gonna go with uh, Gary Russell Jr., who fights once every three years and may not fight at all by the end of the year, and still will still keep the WBC title. When I, do you know what? As we get lower down these, I, I feel like there's like one pound between all of these weights down here between super featherweight and and junior flyweight. There's like a pound per <laughs> like one mil. That's it. One mil will put you over the weight limit. Um, I suppose there's no one else I can go for except for, for Navarrete. Navarrete's a good fighter. I feel like both of those will just be world champions at the end of the year. Uh, I'm going to pick... I'm going to... Oh, I'll tell you what. I'll pick one in the future, but it's already in the past. Uh, super lightweight. Josh Taylor. Ooh. I'll tell you what. Okay, you got Taylor. I'm going to throw another little wild card in there. I'm going to say the winner fights fights uh, Tofimo Lopez. So whether it's Taylor, whether Ramirez wins that one, it's going Ooh. to be it's going to be Jelfimo Lopez beating the winner. I got Tofimo Lopez as, as a super lightweight I'll champion. put one uh, okay, okay. By the end of the year. I like that. We're moving we're, we're moving their weights. Um he can't stay at that, that weight for much longer, I suppose. His yeah. body's... I, I believe it. It's already, I've already heard the rumors that Lopez will fight the winner, but we'll see. Because now with Lopez, making it, I'm with, Lopez ma with, Lo with Lopez making the Triller deal, you never know if it implodes everything. Because, you know, Aaron may not want to deal with him. Well, we'll see. All right. Let me let Politics. me see if I can get any inside information in any of these weight divisions right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you pick... I don't think I have. I, I'm going to pick one that is one of the... Most obvious ones, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna go for super middleweight, and of course Canelo. All right. Well, that only leaves me one option because the title will be unified by the end of the year. It's gonna be either belong to Plant or Canelo Alvarez. Nobody else is gonna get a chance to be a world champion before the end of the year. I doubt they'll fight again after uh, September or so when they're scheduled to fight, which is tentatively September, which probably means it'll more likely be like October. So, so in reality. I've got to go pick Caleb Plant if you pick Canelo because those yeah, <laughs> you have no only, choice. only one Unless, of the two, one of two choices. You never know contracts. Trump contract. I mean, yeah, I suppose there's yeah, there's yeah. no and way nobody's it, really. nobody's gonna strip Canelo. They all want to pick up the sanctioning fees, so nobody's yeah. gonna say, oh, you got to do this or that. So I've got to go with Caleb Plant. Cool. 
Well, even if he wins, he'll probably get robbed anyway. But. <laughs> I don't, I don't He's think not he wrong. Wins, I think. He's not wrong. We've only got a few weights left, I think. Okay, now now we're gonna start to go into we're gonna start treading dangerous territory. The low low weight classes. Actually, we got lightweight. Lightweight is tricky too. Actually, it is. Lightweight is tricky too because lightweight. Is, if if Telfimo goes up in weight like I believe he will, then all of the major titles will become vacant. Um, which means. All the guys holding fake titles right now at the weight class, which is everybody else except Telfimo, will now be able to catch real ones. So in reality, we could just pick any of the any of the lot, and they'll probably pick up a real world title. So I'm actually Shoot. gonna go. I'm actually gonna go with Devin Haney because because I think automatically he gets bumped up as the main WBC champion when Telfimo leaves. Um, he's, they already technically consider him the champion and Telfimo the franchise champion, mm -hmm. which is actually the real champion, but. Um, once Tilfimo vacates the entire weight class, Haney will be the legitimate WBC world champion, and he won't have to make a move. He'll just automatically be crowned that uh, because of his standing with WBC already as having won the, the uh, B version of the title. So so I think uh, Haney's an easy choice at lightweight for me. What about you? So Haney, Haney will get it potentially without even needing to fight Haney, anyone. Yeah, exactly. It's like when Lennox got it when Riddick, when Riddick Bowe wouldn't fight him. He just became the yeah. WBC champion, you know? So. It's kind of like that. So that's why Haney's an easy pick for me. Plus, I don't know where Ryan Garcia is going or headed or when he's coming back. Javanta holds a secondary title, and I don't even know if he's going to stick around lightweight to fight for a, a, a real-world title. So for me, Haney was the easiest choice. Yeah, that, I mean, that's, that's, that's interesting because I'm not sure what Haney's going to do either. But he is the most, for me, the most appropriate name for me to think who's going to be a, a champion at that weight at the end of the year. But even yeah. then, I'm not... Yeah, just I'm not sure the, who. Everyone yeah, I mean, in that you, weight division is waiting to go up. Yeah, but I, I mean, you could say Tofimo doesn't go up, and he's the champion at the end of the year. It's not necessarily guaranteed that he goes up. I think he goes up. I've heard rumors, and I've heard things. And also, he's a big lightweight, so it's just, you can kind of tell he's not going to make that weight for much longer. I don't know what to do here. <laughs> no, I'm going to go with my gut. I'm going to go with. Oh, I don't know. Two of the three wanna go. You've picked Devin Haney. Uh I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with Tank. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Tank. Even though Tank. I'm not sure if he's if he's even gonna come back down and fight there, but there's rumors of him only coming back down and, and fighting there for a big fight. I mean I'm I, guessing that big I, fight I, is I, a world well title. Yeah, I, I think I don't think Tank, by the end of the year, fights for a major lightweight title. He seems satisfied with the B title. Um, I think Tank should stay at lightweight, but I don't know. From the rumors that I hear, he's going to go up in weight. I mean, he's 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 five foot three with heels on, so I, I don't know why he's. All right, fine. I'll change my decision again because he's given me cryptic messages, letting me know that he knows that <laughs> no, people I mean, are going up and down in weight. No, no, so, I mean, uh, that's the rumors. I, I just don't believe Tank should go up in weight, but, I mean, that's what I'm hearing. I mean, he's fighting Barrios. I don't Barrios. think he should. He's fighting Barrios he's, for he's the fight, same, yeah, he's for the same secondary point. belt that he's has at lightweight. He's got a lightweight. He, he, I just feel like Javante needs to fight the the main, main guys. Like, he's going to be the, the secondary champion of every every weight class he fights in. He won two major world titles at 130 pounds. Um, they were legitimate. They were the main WBA title and the main IBA Is there anyone title. else, I mean, then? If, if Supposing... But, um, Lopez does move up in weight, and and obviously the the belts would go would into that rotation. automatically would that automatically bump up Javante the super champion? It might. I mean, That's just what like I think. Bumps up Haney, so you know what? You might have a point there. You might have a point. There. I might. I'm gonna stick with Javante Davis. Uh, let me go further down. Let me go to. Ooh, I'm gonna go to flyweight. Uh, I remember actually sitting in a stadium and. I, I didn't know much about Julio Cesar Martinez, but I knew that anyone with that name, those combination, that, that mm -hmm. name, that anyone with that name can fight. Yeah. Absolutely anyone. So when he came to the ring, <laughs> I just knew this wasn't the, the I, what I really Sonny like Edwards him, yeah. was. I really he like is him. good. And he's, yeah. he's very, he's a violent boxer. He really is. He doesn't, he's not as uh, <laughs> technically schooled as, as others and, and not hasn't got the greatest feet but everything he does is vicious and fast and every punch is like a fudding bang 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 yep. so i'm gonna go yeah. with him I, i'm i'm i think uh the i think he'll he'll definitely still be a champion at the end of the year 
Um, yeah, I think uh, it's. I mean, it, it it gives me only another choice. Sonny Edwards. I could go with Sonny Edwards. I don't even know what he's scheduled to do by the end of the year. Um, I'm sure, I wonder if I wonder if he'll want to fight him again. To be fair. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they could potentially that's a clash, but you know what? I'm gonna go with the safe bet because you never know if Sonny and Martinez end up fighting each other again, and then yeah, and we'll see where that goes. So you know what? I'm gonna go with Nakatani because in Asia they tend to hold titles for a little longer. Unless hold on, wait, him. is that the fight? Uh, let me go back in my room. Is that the fight where Martinez stopped him, and yeah. then Martinez got the belt taken from him? Right yes. there and then. It was almost yeah. like wrestling. <laughs> yeah. Literally, it was like... <laughs> it was like... <laughs> it was like, <laughs> it was like who, uh, uh, Mauricio Vince McMahon Suleiman yeah, yeah. the, <laughs> came in the ring, came in the ring and just and changed it, it right on the spot. <laughs> and they did it on the mic. He's just like, yeah. Hey, that's why I said... If you want me to give said, this belt back, give me a hell yeah. yeah. Like he would, yeah he, I mean, yeah, he I mean, awesome it was the right that. call. You know what, technically, yeah. you know what... I, in, from one perspective, I wish it would kind of happen more often when the replay's right there. And uh, I feel like not just Mauricio Suleiman should do that, but I, I, if it's that obvious, I yeah. also feel like the, 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 the inspector for whatever sanctioning body's there should also do that. I mean, the replay's clear as day in some cases. The, and the you thing can, is, I mean, for, for anyone who's, who's watched that fight, they'll know that there was only one winner up to that point. Yeah. And... Martinez Obviously, is a, is a his rawness and his impatience cost him that win. He he would yeah. have got that win. But those guys, those regardless. guys are just those guys are just hood hungry, man. They just yeah. they just they look they look at to take you out. Like you just the mean streak is some sometimes it's too much, you know, and that's kind of what cost yeah. him in that moment. But they've got good fight. Um, I would like to see it. So it might. I, I'm just gonna go with Nakatani, WBO champion in that weight class. Let's go with super welterweight. Super welterweight. I'm gonna take Jamel Charlo. Oh, uh, now, now now I've got both Charlos in my picks. Who else is there? There that is, I I don't want to say. Hmm. Give me a second. Let me get my research out on. One fifty four. Isn't the Castano fight coming up soon? It could be Castano if Castano beats him. Otherwise, you could go with like a wild card, like an Erickson Lubin rematch or something. Or, I does all right, cool. All right. If we're not counting Lara because he's WBA regular, then I'm not sure where it leaves me. Because it, it really only leaves me with Gerald Hurd, I suppose. Um, yeah, Jared Hurd. But the thing is, you got to see who Jamel is going to fight, right? I mean, is, is Jamel... Because Jamel is... He's got almost all the titles at that weight, right? I mean, who? Any fight schedule? No, actually, no. He doesn't have the BO title. Who's got the I think Castano's got one. Is it Castano? No, no, not Castano. He's fighting Castano, but no, actually, it, it's a, it's a the zone fighter. I think it's a fighter that he's probably not gonna fight. So that's kind of an easy pick to get. Um, let's see. Let's see. Mm. It's, all right. Thing is, I, I am gonna the, guess. Who is the BO champion at this weight class? It's I'm losing my mind right now. Who? Oh, oh, it is Castano. Wow. Yeah. It is, yeah, it is, yeah. Wow, it is, Castano. You're right. I wonder and if they'll fight each other. And yo, look who's number one at the WBO. Tim Zhu. I like Tim Zhu. Tim Zhu is interesting. Very well schooled. I've liked Tim Zhu so Tim, Tim Zhu thus far. This is a, yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting um Because Tim Zhu becomes the mandatory. Hmm. Well Jamal Charlo's hogging. The vast majority of these belts. Yeah, Jamel, yeah. <laughs> is it, I, I'm not sure if, any, if anyone else other than Jamal Charlo is going to really be um, champion at the end of the year. I'm going to go with who's champion right now for the WBO. I'm going to go with Castano. And hope that he doesn't fight Jamal Charlo. That's it. <laughs> no, they are. They're, they're, I think they're signed to fight already. Oh, goodness <laughs> sake. All right, then I'm going <laughs> to... Well, then, who knows? Yeah, maybe well, by the time when, yeah, they, who knows? By, maybe by, the, maybe by the time this show goes on the air, I think they might have fought already. I don't know. I think the fight's coming up soon. <laughs> and if and if Castano pulls off the upset, then, then he's, he's the champion. unified champion. But I still have, I still have a chance. But I still have a chance to get it back because Jamel will definitely get a rematch by the end of the year. So I, my pick is still my pick is still uh, coming through. Yeah, you're right. You're right. And we'll see. Well, I've, uh, well, I've got no choice. When it's all said and done, I've, I've literally got no other choice but to go with Castano. No, I agree. Is there any weight divisions we've missed that I seem uh, to uh, think? Bantamweight. Bantamweight. I'm going to take Nagoya Inui. 
Ah, oh, of course. Um, is he unified? Uh, he's got a. I think he's got at least two of the belts. I think he's got at least two of them. Uh, I guess I have to go Ubali. 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 Yeah, it's Ubali's the, it's the nice only... Too. Ubali's it's a nice the, one, too. Only, and he's yeah. fighting Donaire soon, too. That's a nice fight. Uh, Donaire keeps giving us some really, really good fights. Yeah. Uh, Donaire and Ubali should be a fun one, too. On, uh, right. Uh, uh, super on flyweight. Side. I'm going to go with Estrada. Of course. Estrada is the man at that weight class. Let's see what we got. I mean... I mean, it's... I mean, I don't even know, man. We, I don't think not Chocolatito much to choose gonna, from down here. I don't, I don't, I don't think Chocolatito's gonna. You know what? Ancajas is the IBF champion at this weight class. I like Ancajas. You know what? I'm gonna go with Ancajas. I like Ancajas. I haven't seen him fight in a while, actually. I haven't seen Ancajas fight since since he fought on the undercard of uh, Pacquiao and Horn. But you yep. know what? I I like Ancajas. Ancajas is a good fighter. I've seen him once or twice. Very good fighter. Uh, I'm gonna go with Jerwan Ancajas. You know, we got 122 pounds. I'm going to go with a wild card at 122 because I, I like this kid and, he, and he's, the way he's coming up the ladder. Uh, actually, he's already, I think he's got one of the belts. He's fighting a unifier against Brandon Figueroa, which will be, I think, a, a tremendous fight in the fall. Uh, but Stephen Fulton. Who? Uh, what weight? Stephen Fulton, 122 pounds at, at the Super Bantam. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I could say I could take the safe I could take the safe uh, the safe bet and go with uh, Akhmadaliev who I saw him win the title last year in Miami. He's only nine yep. and zero, but he's one of these former Soviets with like a ton of fights and is already a major world champion. as the, the main title in WBA. But you know, it'd make it interesting. Go with Fulton because Fulton and Figueroa are going to fight each other in a unifier in the fall, and I'm, I'm going to I'm going to go with Fulton in, in what'll probably be a good fight, very very good fight. Uh, that'll be a very good fight, and I I'm probably going to end up having to go with. Brandon Figueroa because it's going to be one of those two. It's going to be one of those two, but Akmal Daliev, I think, is the main champion in the BA. So he, he is. He is. At, he's, the, can, he's the he main WBA and, and, and as well. Yeah, Akmal Daliev will probably be the guy. Uh, be the guy. Be also be a guy who's champion. Figueroa has the BC title, and he also has the the secondary BA title. So we won't count the BA yeah. title. Figueroa will become Figueroa is still counted in the conversation because he still has the BC title. Fulton has the BO title, so. That'll be a good unification in the fall. I'm going to go with Fulton, but it's a good fight. Cool. And it'll be a TV-friendly fight for anybody that should watch it. I'll stick with Brandon Figueroa all, and just see what happens. All you, all, all you non-YouTube fans, you know, <laughs> if you want to see a real fight, watch Fulton and Figueroa. That'll be a nice one. Uh, we have a weight that, honestly, you never really see ever because they're just there's, there's literally um, not a huge market for them. It is obviously minimum weight. I can't say hand on heart that I watch any of the fighters in this division um, to know who's capable of what. So I'm going to I'm gonna cheat here, basically, and go with Freshmart, who is the WBA super champion. Okay. The, the, the only minimum... The, I think the only minimum weight I've got, I've seen... Uh, I think Ricardo Lopez made, might have been a world champion at 105 pounds back in the day. Well, at the moment, up, right? there is... There is... Uh, Silla does the... The regular, and then you've usually, got Pradas, very, Pradasbury. Are, yeah, usually they are very uh, foreign guys. Cuarto mm. and Mendes. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I have to go with the interesting. I don't know that I've ever seen any of these guys fight. Most of the world title fights in this weight class are usually never. never I always uh, find that the, the, the lighter weights all, all kind of well, all the way up well, to... Fre to well, Fredo Mendes. Okay, we'll go, we'll go with Fredo Mendes. Puerto Rican fighter. Yeah. You know what? Right off the island. Nice one. Alfredo Mendes. Nice one. All right. Good stuff. Now, I like the look at the WBC. The, the world champion and the number one contender are both from Thailand. Check that out. Interesting. I feel like it's, it's that way the, in a lot of the latter weights. It's just And the number two Thailand. guy, the number two guy is Melvin Jerusalem, but he's from the Philippines. Mm-hmm. Is he you think he's Jewish? <laughs> it's a joke. His name's Jerusalem. <laughs> <laughs> He's from the Philippines, and his name's Melvin Jerusalem. Oh, <laughs> uh, you never know. <laughs> oh man, but yeah, okay. So I guess I don't know. Uh, I'm more familiar with Puerto Rican fighters than anything else because I'm being in North America. So I'm gonna go with Rolfredo Mendez and see how that, how that shapes up. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, I suppose I I'm assuming most people that are watching are not gonna know who either of those fighters are anyway. 
But I think that's it. Is that is that every weight division covered? All seventeen? That, that that covers everything. That covers everything. I think there's one more division, light flyweight, Paulie. Uh, uh -huh. I'll leave. I'll let you go first with this one. You know, it's funny. A lot of times we know these fighters, and then we don't. We forget with the low weight classes. We forget what. Yeah, with the, exactly. Yeah. That they're in. What I love about what I love about these fighters is it, it, they almost seem like the, with the with the names they have is making me. I know who I want, and it's purely because of his name. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Let's see what we got. Edwin so oh, Edwin Soto is the one that was beating uh, the Japanese yep. guy. Was that Edwin? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alrighto. All right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with uh, Hiroto Kyoguchi, WBA World Super Champion at light flyweight. I am going to go with Ken Shiro, simply because I just love the name. The, the name is quality. quality. <laughs> That's it. Quality the name for a quality fighter. That's, That's it. it. <laughs> quality name for a quality fighter. Good stuff. I think that is all 17 weight divisions. Now, if that hasn't shown you much, it should show you that there is probably too many weight too divisions. Too many weight We probably need to Absolutely. get back down <laughs> towards Absolutely. like 12 at most. <laughs> Um, we'll, we'll revisit this at the end of the year and, and see who got the majority of these right. I've got a feeling Paulie's going to beat me at this, but you never know. There's a shock factor everywhere. Um, anything else you want to get off your chest, Paulie? Anything to say? Anything? To nah, that's it. We got a lot off our chest today. I think that's it. Yeah, me. I feel like we just spent a lot of time looking at no at, at names, being like, is it him? Should have, what about him? What about him? And we, did a, and we did a lot of YouTube complaining, but we're there. Yes, we're there. yes, yeah. We've done enough. We've done enough. Uh, as always, remember to like, comment, subscribe. Um, if you agree with us, if you think that we've missed someone and someone else is in the mix, someone else is going to be world champion before the end of the year, bang it in the comments below and we'll see you next week. Yes, people, I am Savage Dan. I'm Holly Malanaji. You are watching Mouthpiece, the official boxer podcast. We are two of the most knowledgeable, two of the most charismatic, biggest personality guys in boxing. And we are two of the coolest cats talking about this <laughs> <sport> today. <laughs>